And I'm so glad that we actually uh, explored that that evolution because my my fourth foundational question is actually about the monetary value of art. And I think it, the history of that, which coincides with each of those different, I guess we would say disciplines, um, is also equally rich and leads us to, you know, the, the discussion of uh, NFTs. So even when a painter was first painting art, you know, hundreds of years ago, I mean, they struggled to have intellectual, um, you know, control over that. Although, I guess it was much easier for them. They they would they would a lot of times. I guess they made a lot of their money painting portraits or uh, doing actual work that somebody wanted that they had the skill to do, and nobody else could replicate it. But if their art ever became anything that was um, kind of popular, um, se- you know, sentiment or, or um, popularly known, they had a difficult time being rewarded for that. And I think the same for photography. So if you could talk a little bit about the history of uh, protection of artists as far as their intellectual craft and um, how that's evolved along with art over the years. Yeah, I mean, you know, I don't know the entire history, um, but I, but you know, I can talk about sort of recent history. Is that it's all about labor, and you know, so how much time and energy are you putting into something? But also, people have to make a living, and the you know, we you know, the story of you know, Vincent Van Gogh is a perfect example. You know, lived in poverty, um, not appreciated, painting constantly. You know, you make money when it's work for hire. So that's when you're talking about the, you know, painting portraits or, you know, um, being commissioned for something. So when it's work for hire, um, you get, basically you're paid for your time usually, you know, pretty pretty specifically your time. Um, and, but you don't get the ongoing generational wealth or the ongoing, you know, propagated wealth from, you know, if, if, if Vincent Van Gogh were alive and he sold a painting for a hundred dollars to somebody, and then that person went on and sold that, that painting, um, for a million dollars to somebody else, Vincent Van Gogh would not have gotten any of that. Although now in Europe, you do get that. That is actually, a, a, uh, royalties are seen in Europe as, uh, you know, necessary for artists. And that's, that's really a fantastic implementation of a great, a great law because, um, for the example that I just gave, so many people uh, don't really gain the rewards for the creative vision and the labor that they did and, and, you know, so so that's sort of the the lay of the land is basically, you know, you can either get paid work for hire, which is just straight, you know, your hourly labor or some form of that, um, or you can sort of become established as a person who is somehow seen as going to go up in value and be somehow a um, important icon in the in the human conversation. Yes. You know, and so it's so it's um, so it's basically like taking a bet on a stock. Right. I, you know, so that's why you think people, you know, uh, museums or galleries look for young, influential, you know, up and coming because it's not necessarily that that art will become more valuable, but that that will become an important conversation in the human evolution. I think that's a great answer. I really appreciate that. 